voted a local kitten in as the mayor. But it looks very cool. This is the oldest store in town. Spike weather warning. Apocalyptic. There is actually a fire about 10, 15 miles west of here. We're Marion and Chris. In 2018, we quit the nine to five and bought Trudy, our camper van. We are currently on an adventure to drive the circumference of the world. So after another night's sleep here in Anchorage at Cabela's. It's very nice that they let us sleep over, to be fair. It's very, very <laughs> generous. We're going to be heading north today um, up to a town called Torquitna. I think I've pronounced that right because it looks very, very cool. Um, our friends Sam and Andy and the kids, they went north a bit yesterday. They parked up outside a library to do schoolwork. The joys of traveling with your kids, but shows that it is possible. And they are awesome. <laughs> awesome parents dedicated to giving their kids life lessons, <laughs> school lessons, just love. It's wonderful. They are, but we're gonna go, we're gonna go and catch up with them. On the way out of Anchorage, we're gonna see if we can find propane. It's another beautiful day here in Alaska. The sun is shining and it's still light at midnight. <laughs> Somehow we always manage to leave cities and towns in rush hour. I'm not sure how we do that. We always plan to leave either before or after. But today, I was enjoying my bed for way too long. <laughs> okay, there should be a propane place just round the corner let's have a look propane Lovely. suburban propane that looks good i'll have to turn the cameras off because you can't have the camera on when you're filling up propane because you'll go boom well that didn't go too well they're closed even though it says they're open online never mind okay we've just put in another one Okay, so we've come down to Fred Myers, and they should, if all goes according to plan, have propane. Okay, no propane. My Google search ain't going so good. It's gonna be one of those days today, isn't it? Okay, propane attempt number three. We're going to U-Haul. We're going around the mulberry bush. <laughs> we are today. U-Haul. Propane. <laughs> Is it open? Yes. Okay, this is looking more hopeful. Ring the bell. <laughs> I'll push and there, the bell. And there should be someone coming to help. I'll get this ready. Got a little propane tank at the back here. Put that one in. Our little adapters. <laughs> <laughs> Some days you should just go back to bed. Okay, they've run out of propane. Trudy, you've scared them off. They've all run. <laughs> right, uh, I'm not really sure what the what the thing is now. We'll just have to try and find some on the way up, I think. Um, but we should be in Fairbanks in a couple of days, so maybe it will last till then. So we're gonna start um, our journey up towards Torquitna and hopefully we find some propane on the way. You don't have to drive far out of Anchorage to hit the nature and the uh, mountains again. And with the blue sky, it's looking pretty magical this morning. And if you're road tripping through Alaska, watch out for moose. We've just passed a sign that said in the last year, 280 moose were hit on this stretch of road alone. And they're big. They would do a lot of damage to your car or van probably wouldn't do the moose any favours either. Okay, Speedway come good. We got diesel and propane and we're all filled up, which is absolutely amazing. The day's getting better. So far, driving north from uh, Anchorage, the road is in really good condition. It's not many potholes. 
There's cell towers all the way along, so we've got good internet. We're still using our Rent and Connect up here in Alaska. It's working great, and we've met people that have bought the Starlink, and uh, they say that it doesn't work up in Alaska. Interesting. So good old cell tower with Connect Plus and Rent and Connect. You're doing a fab job. Thank you. <laughs> We're probably about an hour, an hour and a half north of Anchorage now. So it'll be interesting to see how the roads change. I think it should be okay between here and Fairbanks because this is the main sort of touristy route for people coming and doing road trips in Alaska. Only 309 miles to Fairbanks. <laughs> So we just tested our walkie-talkies. It said it had a 20 plus mile range and uh, we're on 20 miles. We're gonna see uh, when it comes into, into, into use. Tread calling, barking mad. Tread to barking mad, come in. Tread to close to barking mad, come in. Nope. Marianne said it might work better if I'm outside the van. Tread the globe to Barky Bad! <laughs> nope, didn't work, love. Nope. <laughs> tread to Barky Mad, tread to Barky Mad, come in. Only five miles away and it's still not working. Oh, I can hear a bit of fuzz coming. The crackle. We're only a mile, 1.2 miles away now. Oh, I can hear you. It works. All right, we made it. Okay, coffee made. We're hitting the road again, and we got about a 45-minute drive to Talkeetna, Talkneetna, Talkeetna. Somebody local, how they do it. <laughs> it's a hard one to pronounce. Landscape's got a bit strange now. We got like, a it must be from a forest fire, burnt trees with little houses in between. It's not like the lush green foresty mountain areas that we've got used to here in Alaska. Very flat with lots of dead trees. decided that here in uh, northern America standing by the side of the road with a stop sign must be a bit of a punishment job because your arms ache it's hot and there's mosquitoes and bears and bears <laughs> thank you <laughs> she had a big smile there you go so we're turning off the highway and then uh, we've got about 15 miles down this road. After driving so long, and just suddenly come into a really busy little town. But it looks very cool. Obviously very touristy, but it looks fabulous. It looks really pretty, doesn't it? Okay, we've arrived in Talkeetna. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is go and find somewhere to eat because I'm starving and it's about one o'clock in the afternoon. So we've come to the Mountain High Pizza Pie restaurant here. So we've come outside and uh, we found this seat out in the sunshine, enjoying the beautiful weather here in Alaska. And uh, for those of you that don't know Andy, Sam, who's in the loo, and the kids, they uh, we met them in Turkey and we're doing a little bit of road trip through Alaska with them. And they're on the best behavior because the camera's out. <laughs> Okay, we're refueled, we've had lunch, and uh, now we're gonna have a wander around the town. But the first thing we need to do is we need to figure out 
how to pronounce the name of this town. <laughs> What better place to start by a lovely, lovely little art shop here. I just need to know, <laughs> what's the name of the town? Tarkitna. 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 Oh. So it's like a silent L. Tarkitna. Tarkitna. Ah, Tarkitna. We were right the first time. No, Tarkmeter. Okay, that's always a good thing to start with, knowing the name of the place. I'm guessing you guys are from Australia. No. England. Yeah. Yes. UK. Is it yeah. hard to hear the different yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, so we were right on the pronunciation. It's Tarkitna. And uh, it's located 115 miles north of Anchorage and uh, is one of the main places for hikers to come visiting the nearby Denali mountain. Which is America's tallest mountain at over 20,000 feet. Wow, that's pretty high. So normally from this point, you can see the different mountains here with Denali being the biggest. But today it's a little bit hazy. So this is the Susitna River and back in 1896 gold miners arrived here and by 1910 this was one of the main supply routes to the nearby miners and this is a seriously big river I cannot believe how fast that water is flowing oh so this this isn't the width it goes like beyond this is just one this is braided leg off. this one is one, off. one channel Wow. It's a big river. That's absolutely fantastic. The uh, the wife of the gentleman we were just talking to. She's got her best friend lives in Shrewsbury, which is where I used to work. And what is the chance in that? And one of the fun things you can do here in town is take a boat trip out on the river. And then you'll see really how wide it really is. So walking around the town today is one of those towns that give you a real feel of uh, Alaska. It's interesting, the town's population peaked at a thousand people back in World War One. It's become a real tourist mecca now and there's lots of home crafted, locally produced products that people can buy. It's one of the destinations that people come on coach trips and stuff. Uh, for a night or two from Anchorage and uh, the main reason that they come is they they do hiking they do uh, walks to Denali mountain if you're crazy enough to try and climb the highest mountain here in North America this is a good base place to start but <laughs> they also do dog sledges you can go out with the huskies they do it all year round because in the summer they do it on uh, sleds with wheels on rather than on the snow and it's called mushing mushing there you go that's, that's a called. new word the blue flag with the eight stars actually depicts the big dipper which is the big bear and that is the alaskan state flag it's got a very cool feel walking around town. Look, it's a little old VW there next to a cabin. Food truck, which is one of the, uh, looks like one of the old Airstream caravans. That's very cool. The spinach bread is actually closed. We've eaten enough, but it looks very cool. If you look on TripAdvisor, Roadhouse is one of the top places to eat. But unfortunately, just like so many other businesses in the pandemic, it shut down, but it still does lodging and laundry. But that doesn't stop you finding a good place to eat because all around town, there are lots of cool, funky restaurants. And brew houses. They're brew everywhere. houses. <laughs> So they've also got some cool bars here. Look, the historic Fairview Inn from 1923. House rules, anything out of the ordinary? I no dogs, no smoking, no weapons, no fighting, no drugs, no drinks. No drinks. You can't have drinks in a pub. What's that? <laughs> And then I think this is the oldest 
store in town, Nagley store here from 1921. 1921. There's something else very special about this town that I absolutely love. It kind of makes it our kind of town. <laughs> so, <laughs> so back in 1997, uh, for the mayor's election. Well, we all know the qualities of a good leader like dedication, assertiveness, and likability. The, uh, the people of the town couldn't actually make a decision. They didn't like any of the candidates. So what they ended up doing was they voted a local kitten in as the mayor. Who the, they called? Yeah, the kitten was called Stubbs. Yes, yes. Uh, it's a cat. <laughs> That's right, a mayor cat. And it was a little ginger kitten. Yeah, and uh, Stubbs the kitten was uh, was the mayor for 20 years. This is my kind of town. <laughs> they also have a couple of very cool festivals. Uh, every July, what they do is they load a helicopter up with moose dung. They throw it from a helicopter and people on the ground bet where it's going to land. <laughs> That's kind of fun. That is great fun. And more Marianne style, they have a strong woman contest every year where women throw firewood, uh, a bit like the Scottish Highland Games. It would be. And, uh, and they also go moose hunting. Maybe yeah. not Marianne style. I'd probably have to protect the moose. <laughs> Another thing to do here in Tolkitna is to go on a plane trip. Starting prices from $230. I spoke to a lady inside who did one tour this morning and she said it was spectacular. And you get views, there's a flight map, you get views over the nearby mountains. And what's really cute along this little area is they have a moose outside each property advertising the service inside. There you go, that one's for the planes. Yay. We're just walking and uh, we heard some noise as a plane about to take off. Look, there's a runway right here. So after a fantastic walk around Torquitna, we've now jumped back into Trudy and uh, we're following Colin, the other van, because we're heading towards Denali National Park. Did you see the big moose on the left? No. Ah, there was a big moose. <laughs> wow, look at these views. It is very hazy today. Our friends Sam and Andy just said they checked their phone. There is actually a smoke weather warning uh, in force from here all the way to Fairbanks. So uh, there's obviously quite a lot of fires. Uh, so I'll have to just be careful where we park tonight and just keep an eye out for the phone. It's that time of year when wildfires do take hold and uh, you can just start to smell it. Can you smell it? Yeah, I can smell it now. It was just sort of like a haze, but now you can actually smell it. I can't believe we've got wildfires even in Alaska. It's so wet and cold up here. How is so from here we should be able to see the mountain but the smoke is so bad that the visibility is pretty well zero. There are other mountains on the side here as well but you can't see any of them. So we may not be getting the best shot of Denali today. We've been driving a couple of hours now through these smoky views and it feels like we were saying almost an apocalyptic drive because you can't see the uh, horizon there's just this haze of smoke it is a bit eerie yeah you can just catch the shadow every now and again of the mountain ranges over there and the snow that's still on the mountains 
sort of just highlights the curve. But it's really bizarre. It's a shame because like I say, the views here would be spectacular. you can see but you can just make out the, the mount, edges of the mountains in the distance there. You can see now that we're uh, coming down in a valley between the mountains here and uh, even though it's smoky it's still uh, you can tell how epic it is. We've just pulled over on the side of the road. We saw like a lakey pond. Chris is out filming it for you guys. It's just incredible that even with the smoke and the eeriness of, of that, just seeing these beautiful, beautiful, enormous creatures just dipping into the into the water. Oh, oh it's just beautiful. Oh, that was cool. Spotted a couple of moose eating in the river. That's a pretty good sight there, wasn't it? We've just come into this rest area to do a UE to go back and we've seen this set up and we're thinking because of the fires, it looks like a pump, water filling only. So it's like a pump and that will actually fill up the fire engines. Okay, so we're just turning into Denali Park now. Somewhere over there. Wow, that's really Oh, nice river, <laughs> yeah. So just entering into the park, we've just had a picture by the Denali Park sign. And then they've got this wildlife safety. So it says, stay 300 miles from a bear, make noise, don't run, use bear spray. If you see a moose, stay away and run. And if you see wolves, stay away get tough okay so we're just making our way into the park already we spotted a moose in the bushes um, and we've heard that you can't drive that far into the park at the moment because there has been a landslide um, but we're gonna we're gonna do our best with the smoke and see as much as we can and try and spot some moose or some bears Okay, so we've just come to the visitor's centre uh, and although it's, uh, it's quite late in the evening, we're just going to see if it's open so they can just give us a bit of guidance on where to drive uh, for our little safari trip this evening. Oh, there you go, there's a sign, there's a sign there. Moose are extremely dangerous, do not approach. That's the visitor's centre. You would not want to tackle a moose, they are massive. Yeah, literally, the, the, if you stand next to a moose, they're taller than me. That's how big they are. They're like massive Shire horses. Yeah, it closes at 6 p.m. Oh, there you go. Okay, we're going to make up our own adventure tonight, people. Right, you ready for a little road trip through the park? We are, and the smoke. Okay, so we've jumped back in Trudy, and uh, we're going to go and drive and see as much as we can. Um, I think we should be able to drive about 16 miles into the park, and uh, hopefully, because it's just twilight it never gets dark here in the summer but it's twilight which should be good uh, animal viewing time hopefully we've said it already but you can see the mountains there and this drive would be stunning So yeah, we've uh, we've come down to the, I think it's the end of the uh, the track now. There's a booth there. I think that's where the road's closed and they bust you in. Um, the sun is desperately trying to break through the smoke, uh, but strange. And look at it, the reflection on the water it down there. It is reflected on the water. But it does feel 
apocalyptic. It's like really misty and eerie, and the smell is uh, of the smoke, and it's actually yeah, it's irritating. irritating my eyes. It's a shame, isn't it? It really is. Okay, we're back in Treaty, and now we're just going to try and find somewhere to park up for the night. It's half past eight at night. It's been a long day, but we'll try. <laughs> got a no caravan sign there so I don't think that one's going to uh, I think that means no camping so we'll go on a bit more okay so we tried that one on iOverlander but we don't think the other guys will get down there so no it's it's, it's a little bit deep. it's a little bit steep there so we're going to uh, they're just a little bit longer than us and Trudy was starting to scrape. So we'll crack on, follow them now. Oh, the sun's starting to look great. The sun actually looks better because of the smoke. It's kind of given that real sort of hazy sun, sun look. Okay, so we're just passing uh, this, this brewery and we saw on iOverlander, they've got this bus from the movie. It's a replica of the one in the movie, In the Wilderness. In the wild. Oh, in the wild. In the it's wild. called in the wild. Into the wild. Into the wild. What a crazy, hopefully the floor can cope with my weight. And you know it's a real Alaskan bus because it has a smashed windscreen. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So after our drive through Denali Park yesterday, where it was really, really smoky, we ended up last night crashing at this place by this lake. And uh, it was a good night's sleep, apart from... Mosquitoes, about 40 plus mosquitoes <laughs> met their fate in our van last night. They did. We were there going smack. There was literally like 40 of them we killed uh, until about midnight. But you can hear in the background, there's helicopters coming. And the reason is because there is actually a fire about 10, 15 miles west of here. And you can see the helicopter coming down with the, uh, the bucket of scooping water and then heading off to fight the fires. So we'll have to keep an eye to make sure the wind direction doesn't change. It has actually changed because you can't smell it so bad this morning. Well, wasn't that a fun episode? We hope you enjoyed it. Make sure you join us next time when we continue our adventure north. And if you want to see more, check out this video right here.